Marquise Washington coaching for Rutgers in her first season. She's, of course, got a great coaching resume in her own right, having been the former Penn State coach. And South Dakota State, Aaron Johnston, as Danny mentioned. All right, South Dakota State will start us out winning the tip. Colbeck. For the Timmer. Timmer with the big game for South Dakota State yesterday. She led the way with 12 points for them. And Nelson and Burkhard both with 11 in that loss to UCLA. Seven on the shot clock. Six. Colbeck, three. Got it. Good patience there from South Dakota State. And what they're going to do against that Rutgers zone, they're going to swing the basketball. They're going to challenge the rotations of Rutgers looking to play inside out and way to knock down the outside shot. That's good if you're Coach Aaron Johnston early. The D Bay over to Carter. And these players playing with eight this season, so a lot of minutes required from all of them. Spin move inside, bucket goes for China Cornwell. Tough bucket from Cornwell, and we talked about the interior play for Rutgers. It was China Cornwell and then Cassandra Brown going to come off the bench, but they played actually really good against Tennessee in terms of the interior and a lot to hand, a lot to, to deal with in terms of the Tennessee bigs. Hold that three, no good, but in cleaning up the loose change down there is Tori Nelson. Nelson with the bucket, averaging nine points a game for this team. Streeter over on the wing to Sidibe. We like what we've seen from Sidibe in this tournament. Shot clock down to five. Fans helping her out. Turnaround is good for Sidibe. She's on the board with two. Ooh, that's a smooth jump shot there. Just got to her spot, elevated over her defender, made it look easy. Timmer to Colbeck to Nelson. Nice way to work the ball around here. Colbeck off the rim. But the offensive rebound again by Nelson, and she's got the two. Already two offensive rebounds for South Dakota State, so they are looking to put pressure on the boards. But for Rutgers, you got to be able to rebound out of the zone. You're necessarily playing an area, not a person, but you got to be able to match up, box out, find a body, and rebound. Three-pointer, no good for Streeter. Here come the Jackrabbits. Nelson taking it to the hole. Doesn't find anything there. They'll swing it around. No good for Nelson on the long-range shot. Offensive rebound again. They're dominating the boards early. And the steal there by Carter takes it the other way for the layup. Outside shot, and that one is good for Timmer. The tray ball working early for South Dakota State. Again, that ball movement against the zone. They're just finding the open person, and a characteristic that has always been of Coach Aaron Johnson and his teams at South Dakota State. They find the great shot. They don't shoot good shots. They shoot great shots. Aaron Johnson doing a... Wonderful job for South Dakota State. The turnaround doesn't fall for Cornwell. And for more, we'll go to Danny. Yeah, to that point, I, when I talked to Drew Gilton earlier this week, she said exactly that. She said this team is so cohesive. Everyone is willing to make plays for their teammates. They're willing to pass up a good shot to make a great shot for someone else. She said those exact words. Thank you so much, Danny. Colbeck up top. Good look there, doesn't go. And Sidibe will run the transition here. And an errant pass turning it over and we'll have a bunch of substitution changes here for both teams. And Haley Timmer again yesterday had a big game for South Dakota State. 
You know, we like what we saw from her in those 31 minutes with 12 points and four rebounds, two steals and assists, doing it all. In and out for Timmer on that three. And Hilton Timmer just been playing really solid. I think she understands what her role is with this team. She doesn't try to do too much. And she's a sophomore guard. She's coming in with a little bit more experience this year. And she just looks calm and settled on the floor. Calming presence and shot no good, but the offensive rebound is there for Cassandra Brown. Such a presence that she's just into the game. Bodies go flying. It's like the bottom of a football pile. A lot going on down there and taking some hits. 10-6, <laughs> South Dakota State with the early lead over Rutgers. Rutgers were inbound the ball. Nice getting it to Cassandra Brown inside, but tipping it away was Nelson. Get some deflections there, and there's the steal. Burkhard layup on the other end. And that's one of the 2,000-point scorers for South Dakota State, Maya Selland being the other one. And through the trees was Brown, not able to get it to go. You can see there's an emphasis for Rutgers to get the ball into the post. They want to try to get some ISO one-on-one -on -one options for their post players. As Timmer drives through the lane, a little stop and pop. Again, she's good at picking her spots. And South Dakota's not shooting the ball well. You want to get that second chance opportunity and then possibly score while the defense is unsettled. And South Dakota State is taking advantage of that early. Jack Rabbits have brought their fans from South Dakota, wearing all that blue in the stands, and driving the lane, and one is Kayleen Smichael. Smichael, one of my players to watch for this game because of this. She gets downhill so well, so quickly, and she's strong. She looks for the contact, does not shy away from it. Had a really solid game yesterday. And just really impressed with her play. Again, a young freshman coming off the bench, expected to play big minutes, but just showed some things yesterday against one of the best teams in the country. And she makes the three-point play. 16 points yesterday for this team, along with one rebound. I'll look for her to get some more rebounds to add with that offensive performance today. Rutgers now in a man defense. And I kind of like this opportunity for Rutgers. Just challenges them to stay disciplined because South Dakota State is going to make you guard them for 30 seconds. There you go. There's the discipline and forcing the turnover. Scarlet Knights. And Rutgers with two turnovers, and that's also the second for South Dakota State. Five-point lead, 345 left here in the first quarter. Aaron Johnston watching this Rutgers offense and watching that nothing but net from Michael. She's finding her groove. I think the combination of Smichael, Carter, and Sadibe is a good card combination for Rutgers. Just a lot of athleticism. Got some shooters, but also players who, again, really can get downhill. And great defense there from Cassandra Brown, just walling up and securing the rebound. Michael again, but that one doesn't go. She'll get the offensive board. And two errant shots, two offensive rebounds on this series. And looks like the ball will stay here with Rutgers. But I'm liking what they're doing offensively. Not afraid to take their shots. And they're crashing the offensive boards. Now, Rutgers has a style where if they can get this game to be a little bit more up-tempo and really increase the pace, they could start to take over a little bit because South Dakota, again, they, they want to make you play defense. They want to shoot late in the shot clock. They want it to be a long, slower game, whereas Rutgers, they want the tempo. Thought about it. Bates, then she does it, pulls the trigger, and it doesn't go in. Rebound Rutgers, and that's about the second or third offensive rebound in this Series 16 on the shot clock. Smichael up top, driving, dishes it back out to Bates. Thought about it. Back to Smichael. Six on the clock. And Michael, her shot won't fall. Rebound. Jax. 
guilt trip to Mathewitz. Mathewitz from the elbow, and she is off the mark. And Rutgers with the rebound. Good defense there from Smichael to contest that pull-up jump shot. And then here you go. You can see Rutgers is ripping and running. Shot off the mark for Bates. Timmer off the back of the rim. Rebound Rutgers. Fast-paced game. Fast commence. Michael from outside, the three-pointer doesn't go. Mathewitz with the rebound. Under two minutes to go. South Dakota State lead by three, and we've got three ready to check in for each team. See, that series right there of the back and forth and the quick shots, again, that's going to favor Rutgers more than it is South Dakota State. So Drew Gilton, senior point guard for this team, grad transfer, just was like, let's calm it down. Let's get a good shot. Gilton, three-pointer short. Here comes Rutgers. I thought that could have been a foul either way, and that one will go against South Dakota State. Gilton had the good idea. It was something she was set there. I think she was still moving backwards just a little bit. Got to be set if you want to take that charge. And again, Aaron Johnston, as we see here, such a mainstay with this South Dakota State program. You know, we talked to him about coaching this program, and he said, you know, we've had so much transition. We won the D2 National Championship and the transition to D1 and what they've made of this uh, now. And he said, you know, I haven't been looking for the big job, the big job, the other job. He said, because I've experienced so much personal growth, rather, in my career here. And I love that. You don't hear that often. Absolutely. He just said every three to four years, the job changes. They're expecting a $60 million renovation to their arena, which, you know, going to play at South Dakota State is a tough place to win. And I can't imagine after that renovation how beautiful and tough that experience will be for anyone who's away. You know, a great home court advantage across the arena. And like you said, the big renovation plans. It's only going to get better. Shot falls out for Sidibe, rather. And we haven't had either team score in just a bit here. Jack Rabbits hope to change that. Foul. <laughs> Michael Washington didn't agree with that call, but Michael is long and lengthy. He's a good defender. And if you know Rutgers women's basketball, Always been a staple of good teams who play good defense. They're scrappy. They're athletic. They play lockdown defense. I really think that's why they got a little bit of momentum here later in this first quarter. As their defense is picked up. All right, and there's Selen. And layup doesn't work for Brooklyn Meyer, but she gets herself to the line. And again, another. Great player they were able to recruit to South Dakota State. Somebody who had offers from the Power 5 schools and the Iowa freshman deciding to go help out Aaron Johnston and his program. As she gets to the free throw line. Tons of potential in her game. First one goes. Her first points of the game. And you see Coquise Washington over on the sideline talking to Smichael. Gets the second one to go. Two points for her, and now the lead extended to five. 18 seconds left for Rutgers. They'll try and get a bucket here before the end of the first quarter. Ball inside to Cornwell, back up top. Lafayette over to Smichael in the corner. Got the three. No shot there by Selen and Rutgers pulls within two here. In a defeating Stanford 76-71 in overtime on the road. Big win. Huge win for the Gamecocks and Don Staley doing a great job with that program, trying to become back-to-back -back national champions. One of the best players in the country, Aaliyah Boston in double figures with 14 points. Also Zaya Cook in double figures as well. And 
so great to see these teams playing each other early. You know, you can't ask for better than top five, top six matchups. We've got one later today, and number three, Texas, taking on number six, Louisville. But just gets these teams ready for conference play because that's where you can really make your mark. That's where you find out, you know, where your team is. By the time you get to conference play, you want to have been tested. So just a lot of adversity that a lot of these high teams are going through. And, you know, I heard Coach Don Staley say one time, you know, we don't duck from anyone. We'll play anyone early in the season. We're willing to compete. We're willing to get better. You play us now and we lose, we'll beat you later in March. Absolutely. And they've got the players to do it. Again, it seems like three sets of five that can start anywhere in the country playing for her. And what a coaching matchup. Tara Vandiver versus Dawn Staley. We've had some good coaching matchups here today, and tomorrow we'll have Corey Close and Megan Duffy for UCLA Marquette. So these coaches are some of the game's best and fun to see. Travel call here on Rutgers. One of the things I'm looking at early on here is Maya Sellen as one point from one free throw, but no shots yet. Well, I think South Dakota State specializes in having a balanced attack, and even though she is their main player, they've got other players who can score. Talking about players who can score, though, it's Michael again with another triple. Really impressed with this freshman and what she's shown so far for Coach Washington and the Scarlet Knights. Another three. This one doesn't go for Burkhardt. Up and down we go. Lafayette bringing the ball up. Smichael, and you got to be looking for Smichael every trip down the floor with the way she's playing. And no, not a good shot there for Cornwell. She wasn't able to convert on that, but getting a look inside. Both teams shooting under 40%, but Jack Rabbit say, we'll get you back. Hold back. Ellie Colbeck with that high percentage shot inside. Jack Rabbit's have always been a good cutting basketball team. It makes strong cuts and makes smart decisions with the basketball. 19 to 17, South Dakota State leads this one. Backing down her defender and getting the bucket to go inside Cornwell. This time, nice trip down there in the lane. Yeah, Cornwell's been working hard. I thought the last possession she had gotten fouled, but she's been working hard and blocking shots. Someone thought they had an open lane to the rim, and Cornwell said, uh-uh, not today. Just off the rotation. I'm sorry, Tori Nelson. You got to take that somewhere else. Big play there. That'll get your team fired up by Cornwell. Selling. Foul call here. And again, Selling, no field goals yet. She's one for two from the line. She's got a couple of rebounds so far. This is, again, one of the 2,000-point scores on this team. Selling's sixth year. Great shooter, passer, can post you up. Doing so much good in her career at South Dakota State. There she goes with the field goal attempt, and she got it. That's a nice shot. Got to be able to get her touches. And right there, operates so well within that 12, 15-foot range. Got great touch. Nice bounce pass inside to Sidibe. She works her defender turnaround on the baseline. No good. And Timmer... And company leading the charge here for the Jackrabbits. Swinging the ball around, selling, turn around in the lane off the back of the rim. Rebound Carter. Michael, the long range shot. Three pointer, got it. And now Rutgers takes the one point lead. Shooter, shoot, and Michael just knocking them down from the outside. I believe that's her third triple of the afternoon. Three for three. Rutgers playing with the one-point lead over South Dakota State. Consolation bracket here in battle for Atlantis. Coquise Washington is saying go to the coop, and Carter does. Shot won't fall. 6.22 left in the second quarter.
Sellin, short from three. Battle for the rebound. Bodies go flying in the lane. More bodies go flying. And here comes Smichael, one on one. That shot off the back of the rim. Timmer rebound. Timmer gonna take it to the hole. And Falls hard on the floor, hands to her face, and the play is continuing on the other end as she gets up and shot no good for Abby Streeter. And this is a frenetic pace here in this game. We've got four subs waiting to come in. Selen looking up top for Nelson. Nelson drives into the bucket for the layup. Nelson just so good at off the dribble in, in that inside the paint and just getting around defenders, finding an angle to get her shot up on the glass. Important part of this team, she can create shots for herself, shots for others. And Smichael, long range shot, no good. Possession will stay here. States and Lafayette in for Rutgers. Now trail by one. I mentioned Nelson. She's made three of her six shots, two offensive rebounds, an assist. Great game for her so far. Forward. And an offensive rebound for Rutgers. Sidibe, nice job getting the board in there, but the shot is not falling on that position. Gilton across the court. Shot doesn't fall, and Madison Vlaston thought about taking it again, then gets her teammates involved. Nice bounce pass into Meyer. Into Tyson, back out three on the shot clock. Blaston, three, no good. And the ball is going to stay here. And we have an official timeout here. South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits with the Jackrabbits with the. She's the one win. We're not seeing a Maya Sellin scoring a lot of points. She can kind of pick up that area of the game and put some points on the board for the Jackrabbits. One point game here. Tyson loses control, regains it, gets the ball back, getting to the cup, and the ball finds its way in the bottom of the net, and South Dakota State with a three-point lead. South Dakota State finding some points inside. They got 14 points in the paint, and but add two there for Rutgers as Lafayette finishes that one. One point game. Jackrabbits passing the ball well offensively here. Waston passes up the shot. Meyer looks for some cutters. Back up top. Meyer sits on the shot clock. Bounce pass inside. Timmer spin move and the ball spin through the hoop. Timmer just really a smart player there. Took two dribbles to the middle, felt the defense cutting that off, and then spin back to the baseline. And Lafayette again Ooh. gets that one to fall from 15 feet. Talk about a stop and pop. Erica Lafayette heating up here in the second quarter. Yes, she is. Rutgers trailing by one. Tight game here in the consolation round of the battle for Atlantis. I like that Rutgers is playing more of a man defense here down the stretch, and I think that they've done a good job of just staying matched up. They're communicating a lot. You can hear them calling switch, communicating, fighting through the screens. That time an off-ball foul call, but here's Lafayette, just the stop. Got a little bit of space in the defender, and gonna drop that one for two. That's pretty. Kai Carter will be called for that foul. She's got two, and of course with a very small bench and eight players got to stay out of foul trouble as best they can while playing lockdown defense. Tough task. But a good challenge for this Rutgers team and Coquise Washington. 
chatting with her players. We can hear her from across the court. Such valuable lessons she has. Long history. A great team she's been on. And the shot does not fall for Burkhart. Rebound goes to Rutgers. Streeter looking to get around. Lafayette. She'll back it up. 18 on the shot clock. 2.20 left in the first half. Hey, Lafayette directing traffic right here. We talked to Rutgers and Coach Washington about the point guard position. She said we don't have a true point guard. We asked a lot of Kai Carter as a senior to play the point guard position as Smichael draws the foul and really a bailout fail there. Got to be more disciplined if you're the Jackrabbits in that situation, but Rutgers kind of doing a point guard by committee right now. They're just, again, Kai Carter has played a little bit of point guard. We've seen Sadibe bring the ball up, and then now Lafayette has also, too, shared that role and responsibility. It's tough to play Division One basketball at this level without a true point guard and just someone to direct traffic, and Danny's got more on that for us. I talked to Kai Carter earlier in the week about this, and she said it's been a huge adjustment for me, huge transition from UNC Asheville to start. But AC Nikki McCray Penson has been working on their attack, working on ball handling, and she said Coach Co also is giving her a lot of tips and advice. Coach Co would know a lot about that position, guys. Thank you, Danny. Nelson to the hole doesn't drive. Sorry, Drew Gilton checked that, and. Some great stuff. I mean, she's taking on this role as Danny's talking about. It's been a challenge for her, but a challenge she has accepted and is working at. Again, I love that she mentioned the help from the coaching staff. Uh, Nikki McCray, former head coach at Mississippi State, has a lot of experience. Also played at Tennessee at that guard position, so she can definitely speak to that. And then assistant coach Tasha Pointer, the all-time assist leader for Rucker Women's Basketball. So you've got coaches with you that can teach you how to be a point guard. And, and you know what? Credit to Kai Carter as well. It's never too late to learn a new position. Again, like coming into this season for Rutgers and this senior expected to really be a two guard and coach asking her to do that. It's absolutely a huge responsibility. Michael, the nice pass and not able to get a handle on it was Brown. And here comes South Dakota State with the three point lead after the Nelson bucket. And wow, we got a battle going on down low between Burkhart and Brown. Oh, and Brown has fallen twice on this possession. She is absolutely playing tough defense. Yeah, Brown has been owning the paint. Just been really physical, putting a body to a player, also sacrificing her body, able to draw the offensive foul and selling. And you'll take that when you're able to draw the charge. A lot of times you fall hard to the court and you're not able to do it, but nice play there by Cassandra Brown. One minute and 11 seconds left here in the second quarter. Lafayette looking for Brown. Brown, oh, with the elbow, and now she gets called for the offensive foul. Burkhart takes that one. Just a smart play by Burkhart, understanding that she wanted to ISO, and so she waited until she hit her with her chest, and was parallel to that, able to take the contact. Just a smart play there. Under a minute left, three-point lead for South Dakota State in the consolation round. The battle for Atlantis. Timmer up to Nelson. Right wing three, no good. Here comes Smichael and Rutgers. 46 seconds left. Lafayette from three, but foul beforehand. Offensive foul, Smichael. Drew Gilton. Just the grad transfer has been really special for Coach Aaron Johnson. Just said she comes with a lot of experience. She's a smart player, really commands leadership for this team, and just a heady play. Two back-to-black, really good, smart plays defensively for the Jackrabbits. Let's see if they can convert now offensively. Sellin sees the trees, brings it out back up top. Timmer to Gilpin. To get back to Sellin in the paint, back to Timmer, up top for three, got it with 20 seconds left, and she is able to extend the lead to six for South Dakota State. Playing inside out at South Dakota State. Rutgers went back to that zone and they gave up the three. Rutgers, Luis Washington is saying go. Lafayette, one second left, turn, spin, shot doesn't fall. And South Dakota State will go into halftime with a 32.
gets the DVDs of these games, he marks them good or bad. Good for the wins, bad for the losses. I thought that was kind of cute. I know he's watching at home as well, watching his granddaughter Maya right now. Awesome, thank you for that, Danny. Grandpa keeping it real, good, bad, keeping it simple, and having such an impact on his granddaughter, Maya Sellen. So shout out to Grandpa Sellen and Danny for that story. Nice to see the family support here of all these players too. And about an 80 degree swing from South Dakota to the Bahamas. Four degrees to 84. Speaking of selling, she's not getting her shot. She is passing the ball around, trying to set up her other teammates. Four on the shot clock. Colbeck's got to put it up. She does. And does not touch the rim. Shot clock violation, turnover, Jackrabbits. And that is their, just their sixth turnover of the game. Tell you what, the Jackrabbits are dominating a lot of categories. Their points in the paint, 22 to 10 over Rutgers. We talked about their outside shooting ability. They've knocked down five triples, but they also have 13 second chance points, Jill. That's huge. Absolutely. Sonda Brown, big for Rutgers, trying to not let this get away. She pulls Rutgers within 12, but second chance points are just so huge. It's almost like extra possessions. And selling nice bounce pass inside to Nelson. Tori Nelson's got 13. Smart play there from Nelson. She saw that her defender had turned her head and didn't see her and cut back door. They are playing well on the defensive end, too. Cassandra Brown on the heels of the basket on the previous trip inside for another. And Brown showing us all the moves in her toolbox in the paint. Had the spin move, the step through, up and under, fake up and under, came right back. I mean, just good footwork there from Cassandra Brown in the post. Brown was scoreless in the first half. She's got four points early here in the second half. Ball will stay here with South Dakota State. Burkhart out, Tyson in for South Dakota State. And Toquise Washington will talk things over here in the media timeout. Just under five minutes as I've gotten teammates involved. Really, everything has been working for them offensively, but still, Rutgers can make some adjustments. I think that Rutgers went into that zone, and that's really what South Dakota State took advantage and started to get some opportunities. Would like to see a man matchup for Rutgers. I think they could close the gap if they got some steals defensively and man. Here comes Michael Lafayette to Debe with the outside shot. No good. Rebound Tyson. Nelson made six of ten shots so far in this game. Six rebounds, two assists, three blocks. Having herself a game. Nothing but net. Love that pretty sound from Timmer. Swish. Nothing but money. Haley Timmer, and I've got to tell you, every set shot that she's taken, she catches the ball ready to shoot. She catches it in her shooting pocket, ready for it to go up in one smooth motion. And Danny can add more on this, Danny. Yeah, well, you guys were talking about this earlier, the culture, right? These women choosing to come to South Dakota, and Haley Timmer and I talked about that earlier this week. And I said, what is it about South Dakota and women's basketball? She said, it's really competitive, especially the standard at South Dakota. It's, it's a school I looked up to growing up. I wanted to play here at that level. And she said that they maintain a culture of success that makes women want to live up to it. So thank you so much, Danny. And it would be easy for all these kids to say, you know what, I want to go and play at a warm weather school. I want to pay, play for a power five school. I want to play for this coach, that coach. And But again, growing up, as Danny Wexelman said, Timmer's like, loved South Dakota State. She's from South Dakota, Rapid City, a sophomore, and just something she always wanted to do. And credit to these players for buying into what Aaron Johnston has been doing there for almost three decades. Good question for you guys. What else is in South Dakota besides good basketball? Mm. Maya Sellen's shooting barn. 
Danny, I thought Danny would have had some. I thought Danny would have had some trivia answers for me. I thought. I feel like Danny would know. Like, well, I, they're actually known <laughs> yeah. for Doyle Selland. That's what Jane sounds like. Okay. The barn. Yes, Doyle and his barn. Okay. I What's love the correct it. answer? <laughs> She doesn't know. She's throwing it out there without I know. knowing. I really wanted to get, I just wanted to understand when I go to South Dakota oh. one day, what else am I going to find besides good women's basketball? One of the few states I haven't been to, so I'd love to check out the Selen Barn and get the answer for you. Next year, we'll have the answer for you in the Bahamas. We'll take a trip right before we come here. We'll go down to the 40 degree weather, and then we'll pop back over here in Deep Rock. Danny is saying no. I think we got to do it now. I'd love to go spend the day with this team and Aaron John Johnston. He's a lot of fun. Oh, I'd learned so much basketball wise from that. That's a good move right there from selling in the paint. And South Dakota State has taken a 19 point lead. They really just hit their stride though. I've been scoring offensively the last few possessions, going on a run here, and then been solid defensively. And that was just Selen's second field goal of the game. Largest lead of the game for South Dakota State at 19 as they are pulling away here late in the third quarter. And Rutgers again trying to get this done with eight players. Hard to guard players like Timmer in the lane. She gets it to drop and Timmer's now got 15. Leaner there, just the three dribbles, nice pull up right in the middle and elevated off that pull up. And Timmer also has really good size at the guard position. So he's able to get some of those shots up. She's a 5'11 sophomore guard and really plays big as well. 11 on the shot clock. Oh, nice pull up there for Carter. And she's got four now. Love to see more of that from her. I think Danny Mike Carter needs needs some more activity, and I think Danny. Yeah, I've been chair. waiting for that pull up because I talked to Kai Carter about that. She said it's it's one of the most underrated shots, and having that pull up makes her game so dangerous. She said I worked on it my sophomore junior season, and then I found that I had it in my game, and I haven't looked back since, guys. And shot clock winding down. Tyson inside and one. South Dakota State bench up on their feet for that one. Started with the duck in there from Tyson and then just went right around her defender and finished through the contact and excited about that one as she should be. She worked really hard for that two, those two points. Tyson now with four points. She can make it five here. She does. And South Dakota State now, all of a sudden, this third quarter, they are just rolling up by 22. Sadibe can't get it to go, but nice offensive rebound there by Cornwell. And they'll reset here. Learning lessons for these eight. I'm going to call them the elite eight for Rutgers because... A big commitment to this program with three transfers. Sadibe, the jumper, doesn't go. And there, you know, there's not a lot of people to look to on the bench to come in to sub for you. They're going with those eight this year. An admirable job by Rutgers. Shot doesn't go for Meyer. She battles for the rebound. Rutgers comes up with it. And a nice shot all the way in the lane goes Carter. She's coming on in the second half here. She's got six. That is, that's a really good take by Carter, just an athletic move and transition, and you're right, there are plenty of opportunities for growth for Ruggers, but again, a new head coach that got hired late in the season, ton of new players, and Coach Washington told us it feels like it's eight freshmen that I'm coaching and a new staff, and so it's just going to take time to gel, and we're over Rutgers here on Flow Hoops, and Stay with us here on Flow Hoops. We got a bunch of other tournaments for you going here today as well. The Cayman Islands Classic, the Men's Golf Class Coast Showcase, rather, the Paradise Classic Men's Basketball Invitational. We've got the Women's Baja Mar Pink Flamingo Championship, Venue Twins SoCal Challenge. We've got it all for you here today. Grace Christian versus Lake Superior in that game. 
And then, of course, we've got some other high school games for you. Tennessee State, Butler, Western Illinois, Chicago State. Tons of good stuff. Back to back to play here. South Dakota State bringing the ball up the floor. Rutgers keeping the pressure on offensively. Nice shot there by Erica Lafayette. Got that mid-range spot shooter. Brings the energy for this Rutgers team. And I love that they're still doing it here. Down 20 against South Dakota State here in the fourth. Good defense there from Erica Lafayette. Just picked up the roller, decided to take the charge and sacrifice her body. That's a really heady play there. Lafayette. And I tell you what, there have been some bright spots for Rutgers. I mean, some of their guards have just got more time, shown what they can do, grown defensively, also in the interior play with a combination of Brown and Cornwell. Again, it's just about building that chemistry and getting these minutes. These are valuable minutes, and again, you can work on things and work on chemistry against really good competition. Erica Lafayette, one of the things that her coach loves about her is that 100-watt smile she talked about as Nelson gets the layup in transition on the other end. But back to Erica Lafayette, who's made three of six field goals today for six points, bringing the energy, bringing the smile. And Coach Washington loves her personality. Got to have people like that, especially when times are tough and games are tough, to bring the positivity. And bring in the steal there. Is Gilton, but Ruck Rutgers gets it back. Carter, and then Helter Skelter here, and Sellen gets the ball. And Sellen going the other way for the easy lay. I think it's a common theme amongst a lot of coaches that we've talked to that they love players that bring them energy. Sometimes there are some coaches the things I like about this women's basketball community is the sense of family and all the coaches know each other and some have some pretty great friendships, including uh, Aaron Johnston and UCLA's Corey Close. UCLA's Corey Close, of course, uh, taking UCLA into the championship game against Marquette, but she and Aaron Johnston have a special friendship. Yeah, the, together they coached on the USA Under-19 Junior Nationals team, which was right after COVID a couple years ago. and. Coach Close described Coach Johnson, said he's a great basketball mind. We would not have won the gold medal without him. I've learned so much about him. But she even shared with us that during that time, unexpectedly, Corey's father had passed away. And so on that staff was Coach Johnson along with Joni Taylor. And she said she would not have made it without him. He just supported her. He was there for her. And now they have an incredible friendship and relationship through that. Like you talk about just the sense of family, understanding that basketball brings you together, but it can take relationships so much farther than that. And she just talk, spoke so highly of Coach Johnson and how he is as a coach and then as a person. And I guarantee you, over all the battles that they have had with UCLA beating South Dakota State yesterday, that's the stuff she remembers. And Michael with the three for Rutgers, but just such a awesome sense of community friendship that those two will last forever and beyond the basketball court talk about south dakota state a team that does not shy away from playing anyone they want to be ready for ncaa tournaments i've got somewhat of a hard spot for south dakota state they kicked my team syracuse out of the ncaa tournament a few years ago and advanced to a sweet 16 championship but talk about their schedule and just year after year they choose to be in these tough tournaments they choose to play these tough games certainly getting here in the Bahamas and getting this great competition as well. All right, for more, we'll head over to Danny Wexelman. Danny? Well, when we talked to Coach Johnson about the schedule, he said, I schedule it aggressive early on purpose. The incoming freshmen don't have five to six what he called gimme games to get their feet under them. He said they're just going to have to drink from the fire hose. So they've got this event right now going on. They played a ranked Creighton team. They've got South Carolina coming up in mid-December as well. And this is all, as you guys have said, coming up and preparing them for March. That's what this does, so. Thank you, Danny. And scheduling South Carolina does not get any better than that. That'll tell you a lot about your team and your players. But also, though, across the country, you know that when you're playing the Jackrabbits, it's gonna challenge you. 
It's going to challenge you to be disciplined defensively. It's going to challenge you to communicate. It's going to challenge you to play a good style of basketball because if not, they're going to make you pay. So make no mistake about it. These aren't gimme games or South Carolina is not taking this team lightly. Everyone knows that this team will make you better in some way, shape, or form, and they'll also expose you. Absolutely, as Michael gets the layup there. And you talk about, hey, this is good for South Carolina, too. They have to look at their strength of schedule as they're always trying to get that number one overall seed and the number one seed in the NCAA tournament. So you're right, they get something out of that game as well as Nelson makes the layup and Nelson's got six. Check that. Nelson scoring. Nelson with 17. Nelson has had a great game and all rebounds, assists, steals. Great performance here by her for South Dakota State. Offense or defensive rebound by China Cornwell. And a shot on the other end for Lafayette. Five and change to go here in the consolation round. Selling for three, no good. And Got a great one coming up for you next. Louisville, Texas, three versus six. No one thought that one was going to happen on the consolation side, but a great top six matchup nonetheless, no matter what side of the bracket it's on. That one's going to be fun. We have that one here for you in the late game on Flow Hoops. Will be great. Just talk about great teams, great players, but also two great coaches and Vic Schaefer and Jeff Walls and battled each other over the years, have learned from each other, and it's a chess match when you've got them across the lines. And so just excited for that matchup, excited for the style that's going to be played. And I expect Texas to come out like locked and loaded. I think they're just going to want to bounce back from that loss yesterday and We've got some veteran guards and Sonia Morris and Shaylee Gonzalez that could do some special things. So really looking forward to their defense on Louisville and Haley Van Lith bouncing back too. Well, that's a, you know, a good shooting performance yesterday. Burkhart gets hers to go there, but I think it's going to be a knockdown drag out, not going to be for the faint of heart. And we are going to have a lot of fun with that one. Super excited about it. Just talk about fun and just this tournament. So much good basketball, so many good coaches. And you know, talking to Coach Washington leading up to this tournament, we talked about more players wanting to get into coaching, more players understanding that you can play basketball, but then you can make a career out of basketball. And really love what she said about more black female head coaches on the women's basketball side. She felt like women's basketball is leading the charge in diversity. Uh, and just learning how to manage the staff and managing people is important, but it's important that coaches look like the product on the floor. And Coach Washington, just throughout her career, her storied career, has really embodied that, has just been a staple in women's basketball and someone that you can look up to and admire. And God, imagine for these players playing for someone like her. You play with so much pride. Uh, but you also know that you can turn this game of basketball into a career afterwards. And especially, personally speaking for me, it's been awesome to do that. It's been awesome to play basketball and then sit here and call some of the best women's basketball that we're going to see all season. And I know you've had some great experiences in your broadcasting career and, and getting some help and leadership and guidance and being able to see others do it too and you're following in the footsteps. Recently, I had the chance to be on the first ever women's college basketball broadcast for NBC that featured Notre Dame and the Cal Bears just a couple weeks ago and called that game with Latina Robinson, Zora Stevenson, a mentor and a friend of mine, but two black female head coaches in that, Neil Ivey for Notre Dame and Charmin Smith for Cal and just game was in St. Louis, the hometown of both coaches and the stories that came about and just the impact that coaches have on the game currently and, and what they're doing and how they're inspiring these young women is, is truly fantastic. So I just love that Coach Washington had mentioned the diversity in the game and just how women's basketball is leading that charge. It's so important that coaches look like the product on the floor. 
great that you've had these experiences and that we can see if you can see it, you can be it. So players can look as, as Coquise Washington was saying, like, hey, I mean, who knew when I was playing that I would be able to do that if you don't see it? Carolyn Peck, who's here, a uh, former coach and a broadcaster now, uh, has done that as well. Dawn Staley, uh, we can see when I mean, she has just built something big in South Carolina. And so, such a cool thing to be able to see and Danny Wexelman can weigh in with more. Yeah, that conversation was so impactful and what I took away from Coach Washington is when she said that players now understand that hey, I can actually make a career out of this thing that I love called basketball maybe if I'm not playing on the court, right? But I can do it on the bench. I can do it as a coach and she said that when she was in high school, she didn't think like that and she said most coaches are male but now all these young women who maybe think, oh, I'm going to go pro can see Coach Washington and think well, wait, I can also be a coach. That's really important. And she said that, you know, you can be an announcer, a general manager, a referee. She said, if, if I can have a profession in basketball that's lucrative and meaningful and fills my soul, then that's really the most important thing. And she said, the more diversity you have, the bigger that the story is being told, there's going to be a ripple effect, guys. Thank you so much, Danny. All these coaches, I've just been blown away. I, I said it yesterday, but I feel like a lot of the coaches we've spoke to could be motivational speakers any day that they decided to stop coaching. Like Coach Corey Close for UCLA just had quote after quote when talking to us. Megan Duffy as well about relentless growth, I believe, was, was her mindset and mantra for that team. And, you know, Coach Johnson the same way, which is the standard that he holds his teams to. And really want to highlight them off the court as well because I, I valued school when I was in school. I understand the importance of studying something and planning to have a career in that. And his team, their team GPA has been one of the best ever. They were announced last year as the top academic school in NCAA Division I's basketball. Uh, they had 3.8 cumulative GPA for the entire season. Again, this is during the season in which they won the WNIT. So to be playing late during those, excuse me, late during the semester and just traveling and playing basketball and things like that, but still taking their studies extremely serious. And just during his term with the Jackrabbits, they've never finished worse than third among Division One programs in terms of top 25 honor roll for seven of the past 14 seasons. Talk about demanding a level of excellence out of your players on the court, but also off the court. A level of success that you're demanding and consistency. It's not one year or two years. You have to be doing well academically using those tutors to be able to stay on the court and play for Aaron Johnston. And for more, we'll go to Danny. Yeah, I looked up some of the the things that these young ladies are studying, some of their majors. How about psychology, mathematics, a lot of exercise science majors, business, elementary education, nursing, communications, and advertising are just some of them that these guys are studying and, and putting so much work towards the academic side. I know too, you know, Tennessee has an academic advisor here. Like these ladies have study hall. They are they are not just here. They're having fun in the sun, right? But they are working on school while they're here too. You can get the work in, Danny, as you mentioned, and have a little fun on the side as well. South Dakota State having a lot of it here today. 90 seconds left in this one. Aaron Johnston, I mean, he does whatever the school asks of him, too. He asks a lot of his players, and, you know, when he was an assistant at GA on the men's team and helping out on the women's team, asked to be the golf coach, men's and women's team, and he said, hey, I can't offer you any points on your golf swing, but I was able to drive the man, and I love van stories and, and stories like that where the coaches are everything. They're their mom, their dad, they're the cook, they're the bus driver, they're the coach, and only had one incident with the rental van where he went through the turnstile, didn't realize it was down, and took it out. I was like, that's like a car chase in L.A. <laughs> Man, thankfully no one was hurt in the tale of that story, but... Uh... Just his ego, because the players <laughs> from that team, he said that happened years ago, and they have not let him forget that. But having fun while also running a great program, building and helping more great student-athletes with that program as well. And we know Kokuis Washington doing the same over at Rutgers want to give the coaches their flowers because it makes a difference it makes a difference that they take their time to develop players but also people you've got to exist in this world after you play basketball and I think just personally speaking 
as a college basketball player, it takes up so much of your time, so much of your energy. Everything you do, everything you're dedicated to revolves around basketball. When you decide to study, when you decide to eat, when you decide to go home, all revolves around this game. And so just amazing that these coaches are supportive in these ways and they give a light to these players to challenge them to be really good people off the court to, to care about their studies to know that they can have a career after basketball and would be interested to know for both of these coaches how many of their former players have become coaches somewhere whether they're coaching aau or high school basketball or want to coach college after they're finished i definitely have thought about it in my time thought about it in my time and it's just really cool to see the game grown in that way a lot of coaches on the floor here and again so many opportunities for careers after basketball has ended and when south dakota state won the wnit you're talking about playing in the march april really all year playing the sport off-season practices and they are being so successful south dakota state as they are coming back with a big win after they suffered that loss to ucla that loss to ucla made them better just a seven point game to the eventual, one of the eventual championship team components with Marquette as well. And of course, Rutgers learning a lot from playing against the players like they played with Tennessee, which will help them in conference too. Just a lot of growth for everyone, but I mean, we have seen several upsets. I mean, Marquette getting the win over Texas, Gonzaga getting the win over Louisville, UCLA with big wins, and just really impressed with the caliber of teams and players here down the stretch and UCLA specifically man just really a bright spot I'm excited for them there in that Pac-12 I think they're going to do some real damage this season on the west coast they got upset by the or I don't know if you would want to call it an upset but beat by South Dakota State in the semifinals of the WNBA NIT last year and came back to beat South Dakota State in this one and they will play for the championship against Marquette as you were discussing South Dakota State will move on in this one 75 56 over Rutgers with 13 seconds left they will learn their opponent after tonight's late game and the Jackrabbits We'll run down the clock on this one. An impressive victory for South Dakota State. 